right, so it says number 16, and this is, you have this problem already. You have your test to review. Find the solution to the differential equation dy over dt equals ky. And, and I tell you what, as soon as you read that in your mind or on your paper, you should be writing this down. That's what it means. Okay, when you read that so that you don't have to take the anti, you know, the separation of variables and the antiderivative and all of that, you need to understand it. It means this right here, okay? That satisfies the given conditions. Y sub O equals 60. What is that giving me right there? It's giving me this piece right here, right? It's 60. And then it says Y of 10 equals 30. So tell me where to put those numbers. What's the 10 go in place of in that equation? T. And then where's the 30 go? Y. So I have 30 equals 60 e to the k times 10. And then from here, I'm going to take and solve it for k. And then once I do have it solved for k, this is saying find the solution to the differential equation. Your answer is going to end up having the um, y sub o and the k filled in. Okay. All right. So then from there, divide both sides by 60, right? I get one half or 0.5, I don't know, since it's calculated, you're probably going to use a 0.5 there, equals e to the 10k. What do I do next? Natural log. So I have natural log of 0.5 equals 10k, divide by 10. So then I go to my calculator, and I pop that in. Don't forget the parentheses over here, though. Okay. That'd be about the only thing you could mess up on your calculator with that. Natural log of 0.5, close my parentheses, divided by 10. K comes out to being negative 0.06931487, and it, you know, it keeps going. How many decimal places do we get in this thing? Three. Unless it says otherwise, and it does not on this problem. So my answer right here is going to be negative 0 0.069 T. Now, some things to, you know, double check to make sure. This negative means it's decaying. Did my quantity decay up here? Went from 60 to 30. So yes, it did. Sometimes we lose a negative within the problem, though, and it's here that you can pick it up. You know, that if that gained and it was getting bigger, then that needs to be a positive rate right there. I have to take the negative away, you know. So I like to always check that myself just in case I, you know, looked over something with a negative sign. Question one. Question one. Okay, next one, number 17. There's two problems within this right here. Complete the table for an investment if interest is compounded continuously. So as soon as I <coughs> see that word continuously, it's telling me a formula to use, right? It's saying to use the PERT formula or that same one that we used on the last page. I don't know. Are you guys more after writing PERT or Y sub O E T R T? PERT. PERT. I, that's why, yeah, me too. We're all trained the same. All right. So the rate is 5.25. So if the rate is 5.25, how do I write it here? Right. R equals 0 0.0525. And then from there, um, amount in 30 years is 2,898. What that's giving me is when the time is 30 years, I'm going to have $2,898.44. It's kind of giving me a point that I can plug in to this formula. So going up here, I could plug this in, and from there, I could solve for P. Sometimes we don't realize this 30. We don't read the chart and realize they're giving us a time. Okay, so let's see. I'm going to say 2,898.44 equals P. I don't know how much. E to the rate, which is 0 0.0525 times 30. 
And then I got to get P by itself. So I'm going to divide both sides by E to the 0 0.0525 times 30. And we go to our calculator. So 2898.44 div uh, divided by, ooh, I'm going to be careful with that. You know, I'm going to use my fraction key just to make sure there's no crazy stuff. 2898.44 on top, E to the 0 0.0525 times 30. I think it would have been okay though. P equals 599.998971. Do I give three decimal places when it's talking about money? So we have to understand that, that money is not three decimal places. This is referring to $600 that was deposited in this account. Okay, so the initial deposit is $600. Now, can I figure out the doubling time? And so on your test, I have this that this is part A and this is part B, you know, this other part. So I kind of have them separated for you on the test. So doubling time, I would expect to see on your paper. Um, this here would be the easiest way to do it, okay, which is t equals natural log of 2 over 0 0.0525. Doubling time and half-life use the same formula, okay? So natural log of 2, close my parentheses, divided by 0 0.0525, oh, somehow it went into an exponent divided by 0 0.0525, and we get approximately 13.203 years. Okay, approximately. Um, and that's fine to leave the answer like that. You don't have to say after 13 or after 14 years on that. Because if it's continuously, it's saying it's constantly being updated, which means you can get your hands on it. If it's, if it's like yearly and they're only putting interest on at the end of the year, then you'd have to, you know, wait till the end of the year in order to touch the money. So 13.023 years. Questions on that one? Next one, another half-life question. So remember, T equals natural log of 2 over K or k equals natural log of 2 over k, uh, t, you know, you might use one or the other. The radioactive decay um, isotope samarium-151 can be modeled by the differential equation dy over dt equals negative 0 0.0077y. That's that same thing saying you need to use y equals y sub o e to the kt. k in this case is 0 0.0077 where T is measured is in years. Find the half-life. In this formula, I can't use a negative. Okay, the rate is 0 0.0077. It's decaying at the rate of 0 0.0077. Okay. So for this right here, all I'm going to use is this formula right here. There's nothing else I have to do for it. Okay. So it's T equals natural log of 2 divided by 0 0.0077. And I get 90.019 years. So for this, to find the half-life of it, I, I would, if it doesn't say like where around, get those three decimal places, you know. Truly, if it's only done every year, you know, you'd have to go 91 years before half of it was removed. Okay. Questions on that? So tomorrow we're going to be doing the. Uh, I think it's it's just like this, yeah. Okay. Three places. Or if it doesn't say, go to three. Okay. Uh, the other thing too, I need to start mentioning with you guys, and I'm horrible at this, but whenever I do round a number, I really should be putting squiggly lines saying I rounded this number to this. Um, AP looks at that, and if you say it's equal to that, there are some graders that feel that should be marked off. 
So we don't want to censor them in any way to not like you when they're grading your paper. So any time you round, let's start trying to do that. I was going to start doing that when we review for the test and get in the habit of it. Um, you know, it's not my beef, it, but I do know there are some of the graders that are really upset when people don't put squiggly lines, you know, personal preferences kind of thing. So that was a discussion that came up. Okay, next one, complete the table for an investment if interest is compounded continuously. This time, an initial deposit is given and your amount in 30 years is given, but you have to come up with the annual rate and the doubling time in years. Okay, so I can't get the doubling time. Oh, I suppose I could, but um, I, it's easier to get once I have the rate. So from this right here, it's compounded continuously, right? So we have A equals PE to the RT. We're starting with 1,200. We don't know the rate. But we know after 30 years, we have that amount. So after 30 years, we have $10,405.37. Look at this problem and think about what it means. You gave the bank $1,200. You didn't touch it for 30 years. And in 30 years, when you're ready to retire, they're going to give you $10,405 for it. What do you think? Kind of nice, right? That your money took and just kept earning interest on it. That's what our retirement accounts are. When you invest in your retirement, that's what's happening. And the money that you put in at your youngest ages and your low 20s and even right now, the money that you're putting in it's going to grow exponentially more than what the money is that you put in. You're going to put larger amounts in when you're my age, but it's not going to grow very much because I retire in three years. So it's not going to collect as much on it. You know, so it's the money that you first, when, you know, it's when you're young that you're putting in that's really going to grow drastically to give you a lot of money when you retire. Okay? And you got to make sure you have enough to last you till you die. Right, that's the goal is to have enough. You know, you don't want to run out. I remember when my grandpa was 77 years old, okay? He was so angry. He's like, oh, I just, I shouldn't be living right now. And I'm like, Grandpa, why are you saying that? And he says, I only saved enough money to live to be 75. I didn't expect to be 77, so I'm running out of money. He lived to be 94. Is that crazy? But he was so mad, and yet my dad died at 77. His dad died at 94. No, actually, his dad died at 97. His mom died at 94. Sorry, I got that mixed up. But it's just, it's crazy, you know, that my dad was like this healthy person and dies, you know? And yet my grandpa, who, you know, wanted to die and wanted to be dead, he lived. <laughs> you know, it's like so opposite of what you'd expect. But this is why he didn't save enough money, you know? I mean, he lived in Vermont in a little town. Like, I mean, like things are so cheap and inexpensive there and life is so different there than it is here. And that's why he lived so long. You know, he didn't live in a stressful life or world at all. Y'all are gonna be young when you die because your world is so stressful, you know? I don't know. It gets, those phones, those darn phones, they just make things so much more stressful. Technology period does, but it makes us able to be more stressed too. You know, it's like, those are great options. All right, let me get off my little tangent here. Let's divide both sides by 1,200 now. All right, 10,405.37 divided by 1,200 is 8.67114167 equals e to the 30r. And then what do I do next? Natural log of both sides. And so this side gives me 30R equals that. <laughs> me being lazy. And then divide both sides by 30, right? So on my calculator, I'm going to say natural log of second answer so that I can continue to be lazy and not have to type that number out. Because if we try to type that number, guys, probably at least two of you are going to transpose two of the numbers. Because you go to write them and, you know, or you go to type them quickly or you write them on your paper and then you go to put them here and then they're wrong, you know. 
So your best bet is to use that second answer as much as possible to pull those numbers out, okay? And then close the parentheses, divide it by 30, and R is 0 0.072. Now this is asking me for a rate. We don't give a rate like that, we say 7.2%. So for a rate, we want to, when we're asked for the rate, we want to give it as a percent, okay? And that's part A. And then part B was asking the doubling time. And again, we're going to go back to this formula right here. The time is natural log of 2 divided by that point zero seven two, which I'm going to use second answer. It came out on my calculator point zero seven two zero zero. You, there are four zeros in a one five four. So you know, even if you use point zero five zero seven two on this, you probably be very safe. So natural log of two divided by second answer comes out approximately. I, I really only need the two squigglies. Nine point six two seven years. I'm going to double my money in less than 10 years. But what people start realizing with that then, if I'm going to double my money in that time, then maybe I want to put more than 1200 in. You know, maybe I'm looking at, I'm going to buy a house in 10 years. So may, and I'm going to double my money. Okay, if I've got $5,000, let me put it in there. I'm going to have 10,000 then in 9.627 years when I'm ready to build. You know, so it's good to, you, you know, kind of have those conversations with people that know things about finances. Like, I grew up very, very lucky to have people in my life. I babysat for a banker for many, many years. And then on top of that, my parents are both accountants. You know, so that helped me a lot with money. That's why I am where I am financially today is for that reason. You know, and there's a lot of people my age that are not in that situation. But I was lucky to have those people. So ask those questions. You know, when, when it comes down to it, find somebody that knows something about money and start looking into it. You know, it's very, very important, you know, for your future. Your future. All right, and then this is the last one because this guy here, the deep dish apple pie, might sound good and delicious, but we're not doing it, okay? Um, for this one here, um, you're, I'm going to give you a graph, and I'm not giving you the points, okay? But there are two very clear points on there. So if you ask me, your best bet is to put a dot on the points you're looking at and label them. That will help you, okay? These here, that one was labeled great. This one, really put it the right way, zero to, okay? You want the y-intercept as one of your points, okay? Because that's your initial value, right? So then it says, find an exponential function y equals y sub o e to the kt whose graph passes through the two points. So y sub o, I know, is my y-intercept, which is two. This is t, this is y for my equation. I gotta find k. So with this, I could have five equals and then times two. Even if I use y equals ab to the x on this problem instead, I still am gonna get the right answer. So on my key, I actually have it both ways in case someone does it one way rather than the other. Because I don't think on the test I give you this. I think I just say exponential function. These are both exponential functions. So it's, you know, the answers could look different even though they're correct. All right, from here I divide both sides by two. I get 2.5 equals e to the 2k. Take the natural log of both sides and then divide by two. K for this one comes out to be and then from there, it says find the exponential function. So I got to go back up to my equation, and I got to plug this in for k, and I got to plug my y sub o in. So I'd have like y equals 2e to the 0.458k, or sorry, t. Now, should my 0.458 be positive or negative? 
right? It's growing, right? What if it's coming down like this? Then it would be negative. So that's where it's good to understand growth and decay. You know what that is. Like. That's what tomorrow's portion of the test is. It's gonna it maybe take you 15 minutes. Like I don't even think it'll take you that long. Okay. Quick and easy. There is a state send off tomorrow, but I don't think it impacts your class. You're gonna be taking all the time. 